So the real question that we have to answer is what effect does a virtual environment or uh, a video game have on somebody? Uh, it's obviously not a zero effect, otherwise we wouldn't play them. You know, there, it's, we're getting something out of it. But what effect is it that we get out of it? Uh, again, there's no definitive study that I have seen that shows one way or the other. Um, some say that uh, playing violent video games increases your tendency to violence in the real world. Some say that it's neutral. Some say that it's actually uh, counters your tendency to violence in the real world. Uh, personally, I would be in the last camp. You know, I come home from work, I'm pissed off. I turn on the, the computer, I shoot some people in the head. I feel better, right? Um, so, you yeah, know, but I don't know. There's, there's no definitive studies out there to say either way. Now, one of the questions I had asked in uh, a previous video dealt with chronic abusers and what potential, if any, a virtual environment would have in helping such people and turning them into, you know, at least productive members of society. Uh, and it's a very dangerous question. It's a very dangerous experiment to try. Uh, you know, on, on the positive side is, is kudos, you know, Nobel Prize, whatever. On the other side is uh, you just created a monster. And, and that's a very bad experiment to, to undertake without understanding that. Um, but the question really is, could you take an abuser, someone who is a chronic abuser, say uh, a rapist, a serial rapist who is never going to stop raping people, and instead of locking them away in jail for the rest of their life, take them and give them a simulation to where they could go into this realistic simulation and do what it is they need to do, would that relieve that pressure so that they don't actually have to do that in the real world? Or would it exacerbate their problem and make them an even more dangerous member of society? Um, and unfortunately, the only way to answer such a question is to perform the experiment, which, you know, again, on the one hand, you have an improvement of the situation. On the other hand, you've just created an even worse monster. So um, it kind of sucks. Personally, I think uh, if I were to guess, I would say that it would have potential to alleviate their problem. I mean, let's look at it this way. If the person who would go into a place and start murdering people, for whatever reason, say they were fired from the job and they go back to the job, you know, with their machine gun and they start killing people or, you know, real, uh, situation like what was at Virginia tech, you know, a kid who's, who's ostracized and has no friends and blames other people and, and then goes on a killing spree. If someone like that had access to a realistic completely immersive experience where they could do that and cause all that pain and cause all that anguish and get that release would they then still feel compelled to do that in a real environment where it affects real people um, you know again it has those those two possibilities either it could relieve that pressure or it could be used as a training tool so they know, you know, how to most effectively murder people. Uh, and if it's the second one, then we've just fucked up. But if it's the first one, I mean, what kind of, what kind of potential will that have to improve society? So I think, I think such a, an experiment would, would be beneficial. I think it would be worth trying because the potential good of helping, I mean, how many people in society are affected by chronic abuse of some sort or another? Um, and we're not just talking, of course, the abusers. We're talking about the people that they affect. I don't give a fuck about a serial rapist, whether or not they have a good day. What I care about is the people that they, that they rape, the people that they are affecting with their actions. So how many people could we help that would be potentially targets of someone that we could keep under control with a simulated environment if if that's an option so I think that such an experiment has merit to it 
Um, you know, it, it would have to be done under very, very uh, watchful circumstances, obviously. But, you know, w the answer really is we don't know what would happen. Anyway, I got kind of off on a tangent there, but I think the main reason I go into that part of it is because that experiment or such an experiment if we did something like that I think the answers would be in that um, as to what effect violent video games have on people I think personally um, it's pretty self-evident just in the fact that uh, we've been playing violent video games for 20 years now and you know we it didn't turn us all into raving lunatics that I think that violent video games themselves don't have a negative effect on people. If anything, I think it's the opposite. I think that having access to that simulation where you can go in and be a complete bastard um, actually helps you release that aggression and don't keep it, and, and to, to not keep it bottled up inside. Now there are other asp uh, other ways of doing that. You know, go to the gym and punch the punching bag. Um, but I think that violent video games serve a very good purpose in that aspect. And I think it'll only get better when we get to the point where we have full video immersion, full complete immersion into the world um, that we're interacting with. I think it'll even uh, augment that release. Um, but again, there are, no, there are no studies to say either way, so who knows. Now, one thing I wanted to say here um, is let's not fool ourselves. Make no doubt about it. Whoever you are, whatever you believe, there is darkness inside you. It's there. Um, we are a violent species. It is in our nature to be so. Uh, it is, shall we say, a core part of our evolutionary advantage over other species. So... Overcoming that, eliminating it entirely, is impossible. Now, all we can really do is is identify it, accept it, and keep it under, in, in check. Now, ignoring it, acting like it's not there, isn't keeping it in check. It's suppressing it. Now, anything we can tell, just from watching human behavior, anything that is suppressed has that potential of busting forth and wreaking havoc. So you're, you're not gonna you're not gonna gain control over it by suppressing it. You have to understand that it is there. Come to terms with that. Accept it as part of yourself and then say, you know what, you don't get to control me. And then keep it under control. Now, some people have a better uh, grasp on their inner ape than others, obviously. But again, make no doubt, of, make no mistake about it. It's there. You have an ape. I have an ape. We all have that inner monkey who just wants to tear things apart. Um, we're stuck with it. So, why would you want to? I think was one of the questions that you had. Why would you want to? engage in this viciousness in the virtual world well one reason I can think of is to make your monkey happy okay your inner ape wants to be aggressive your inner ape wants to smash things so let your inner ape smash things in a way that doesn't hurt anybody keep that monkey satisfied and quiet and docile so, anyway, that's just my thoughts on that. So, let's continue. But in the long run, personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with indulging those, those dark parts of yourself uh, as long as you're not actually hurting anybody. And in a completely immersive virtual environment, I don't think there would be anything immoral uh, implied in being a complete homicidal maniac. Um... If you're not hurting anybody, there's no one actually hurt. Now, one thing that we have to talk about is a complete transference system. I think Honest Discussioner talked about this sort of an idea where what if we could actually digitize our brains and transfer ourselves into 
a computer environment. So long after our death, we actually continue to exist in this virtual reality, uh, this computer reality. Well, now you actually have a, a, a problem because you aren't interacting with just computer programs. These are the minds of other people that you're talking to. So, so now we're in to another system where there's actually more than one person involved. But I think Largo, uh, Largo 64 made the best point as far as morality itself is concerned, which is that both the, the, uh, the root of the word ethics and the root of the word morality come from Latin for custom or customary. Um, which what that tells you is that the basic building blocks of morality are interactions with other people. If there is no other person involved, then there really is no morality. Um, no matter what you do, there is nothing that is immoral unless it's affecting another person. Um, or unless you have decided yourself that it's immoral. Because morality is, is subjective, entirely subjective. It's based entirely upon the people that you're interacting with. So if person A and person B have come to an agreement and they're both of sound mind and ability to make that agreement then whatever they decide upon is not immoral if it doesn't affect other parties it's just that simple so anyway I'll stop babbling now uh, thank you for watching uh, take care and have a good day